Hello foodies, Jessica here, and you're watching Food for Young. Hey foodie fam, I'm sitting here with Chef Bruno from The Corner, and we're gonna kind of go a little bit deep into his journey and story about becoming a chef, how he had his own restaurant, and then answer questions asked by you. Alrighty, Chef Bruno, so first and foremost, can you explain what dish is in front of us and what is the wine that we'll be drinking today? Okay, so um, I'm very lucky I have somebody on my team that is a sommelier, uh, Rami Ayub. So Rami selected a wine that's going to pair up with this course, the next and the next. So it's a Petit Seraph. It's from uh, California, from St. Martin. The dish that we're having is a salad course for this month. We change our menu every month entirely besides one course. And we're serving a hearts of palm salad. The hearts of palm have been in Scabeche. Scabeche is a treatment that we give to, to food, this time in hearts of palm. That is half pickle, half confit, so there's lots of olive oil, lots of vinegar, um, different spices, different herbs. And after we grill it, we throw the hearts of palm warm on this mixture of vinegar and olive oil, herbs and spices, and we let it sit there, no fire, just warm, and it sits there and it cur curates it, if you will, cures it, I should say. We do that, we serve on a bit of a, avocado puree, lots of lime, lots of, <laughs> of uh, vibrant olive oil, um, almonds, raw uh, red onions, and roasted peppers. It's super easy for us to give you a bowl of greens, vinaigrette, and croutons, but that's not what we do. We try to do something differently. So, hope you love it. Let's do it. Yeah, the fat, the avocado, the lime, everything goes well. I love that. So, the corner, what kind of inspired you with that name? The name comes from like a joke, if you will. Oftentimes I'll do something silly and then my friends will go, you know, just don't mind him, it's just foreign. Because I'm not, I'm not from here. Yeah. I'm originally from Rio in Brazil. Brazil. And I wanted to give a name to this dining experience that left everything open. We can play around with different foods. What kind of style would you say that, you know, the whole, like the foreigner brings? I think it's ever changing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's ever changing, really. Because we, again, we change the menu every month. And that's something that we're going to carry into the restaurant as well. Um, I think it, it gives it keeps the guests coming back and seeing different things, different takes. Uh, but more than anything else, what we try to do, we try to highlight local produce. We try to highlight local producers as well. We have awesome craftsmanship here. Lots of deals with uh, with uh, Everoak, Backyard Express, uh, Lake Meadow Naturals. But besides that. Um, Super lucky to have people like Cesar Cruz that bakes our breads with a CM Bakery. Astronomically happy with the oysters that we get from Sublime up in the Panhandle. Yeah. And it's Florida oysters raised the correct way. And a day before they come to us, they're, they're harvested, so they're incredibly fresh. I noticed that for the octopus. That's your logo, right? It is, yeah. I've always liked octopus. I think it, I, I just think it's a super cool animal. And then I started reading about the octopus one time. And the Either octopus... They're one of the smartest animals. I one think, of, one of the smartest animals, yeah. Um, is, a, is a traveling nomad-like animal as well. And But more than anything else, there were tales of mystery in the octopus back on the conquering days. And the sailors, they were the first thing the sailors would tattoo on their arms and things like that because there was a whole allure of mystery. I like it because really you're coming into a dining dining room experience that you don't have any clue of what's like going to no happen. no idea what you're stepping into. So right? it's exactly <laughs> it. Can you give us a little bit more about, I guess, like your journey? Uh, when did you first start? I came here to go to school and ended up staying. Long story short, one of my first jobs was at a restaurant. And I was in Tallahassee working at a uh, private dining club. At one time I'm leaving the building and it was a master chef in the kitchen. Um, as we're leaving the building, the, the guy pulls us aside and goes, hey, look, if anybody wants to pick up some hours, there's a gentleman that called in and, and we need the, the room filled in. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And I went and did it and I caught the bug, if you will. So then after that, I dropped out of, of college, went to culinary school. 20 years go by, here we are. One of the main reasons that I wanted to do this in the foreigner, you get to see people's reactions at the year food. Yes. Like you know? me right now. Like, yeah, I'm like sure. me right now. I never get to oh, do it. Yeah, you never get to yeah. do it. Well, I know that we haven't touched the wine yet. Yes. Should we, should we do that? Yeah, please. Cheers. And what's the correct way, would you say? So I, I typically hold my, my wine by the stem. Okay. But it's also, to me, is how comfortable you feel. Comfortable. You know, it's almost like you 
I can't force you to be left-handed. But definitely nothing touching the... the no, I, I try not to, so I don't want him to lie. Gotcha. What is a typical day in the life of Chef Bruno? Oh, God. <laughs> what, um, what do you do for fun? It all depends. For fun? <laughs> or... I have three kids. I have three girls. So that's... Oh, I'm from three girls, too. You're from three girls, too? My dad knows your pain. Yes. <laughs> We, we Does he have the same haircut as me? No, actually. No, I he, think he not kept yet. his? Yeah, he kept his. Good for him. <laughs> then you guys weren't so bad, so. Not so uh, bad. Um, <laughs> no, we, uh, I'm, I'm lucky. My, my girls are fantastic. I, But that's um, what I do most of the time. As much as I can, I spend time with them because when I'm at work, I'm at work. I honestly try to just, when I'm off, to be off. Yes. To kind of just enjoy the moment. But it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard. hard. And it's not because I mean not to. Is you know, I can't be here, let's pretend I'm, I'm, I'm with my girlfriend, I'm sitting over here and I'm yeah. looking at her eating the food, I'm like, <laughs> maybe this maybe could this. be with that. We have course number two. Chef Bruno, can you explain what this dish is? So we love luxury here. I think that whenever you come to a dinner like this, it comes with a price tag that we, we're gonna produce you some for you that is higher luxury. end, if you will, <laughs> luxurious. And not just luxurious on the name, but also on the mouthfeel. So we're giving you a uh, parfait uh, foie gras. So uh, foie gras is uh, duck liver, um, it's super rich, it's absolutely delicious. The parfait foie gras on top of a uh, bay leaf crumble and uh, we want to make it almost like a cocktail if you will. Oh, wow. So there's a touch of uh, lime zest and we made a, a pineapple relish or compote. The pineapple has been braised in a um, rum caramel. And we give you with lavash from CM Bakery, that those, the baker that I mentioned to you before yes. that we use there. Their, uh, their breads. The bread. Yeah, and the, the lavash itself has bay leaf within it. So there's bay leaf all over it. We really want to pronounce that a lot. It's yes. almost like we're doing a study bay leaf with foie gras. So um, the way I hate giving instructions <laughs> on how to eat our food, but I think that this kind of presents itself well. Mm -hmm. So just go ahead and grab the lavash, the bread itself, yeah. And you get your knife there. You, kind of, you can break to whatever size you want. And you just get the foie gras and you spread on it. Almost like a mousse or a so pate. Like this? Mm -hmm. And you grab some of that. Yeah, just like that. Mm. And you put a little bit of everything on your bread. Yep. Already. I love the different textures that you put in here. Um, like you have the crispiness, mm -hmm. right? And then you kind of have like a little bit of fat from the duck liver. Well, a lot of fat. A but lot yeah. of fat. <laughs> but you know. The bay leaf kind of cuts yeah. it, has that, that little cut. Yeah, so the bay leaf is the, what we like to call like the common link behind, behind everything, kind of. Everything comes together on it. The pineapple really, really helps a lot with yes. this. I like that it adds like a little bit of like sweetness mm -hmm. that you don't expect. So we try to cut cut that when we make it because you know this is not a cut of the liver. We make it into a mousse, then we cook it, and then we present it to you like that. So it's spread up and delicious. Wow. So yeah, but it's um, <laughs> this is very, very strong dish. Yeah. It's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. So what would you say is your favorite part of the job? Creating the dishes and. You know, we, we want to create you a whole experience and it's segmented into the seven courses. Currently seven courses at the restaurant, I'm going to do more, but you know, segmented into those courses, you know. So you first, you come in and you have the first course and then the second course for this month, for example, yeah. was a salad. Okay. And then after the salad, you're having the foie gras. So you're having something super acidic and, and, and bright and you have on the peppers and then on the roasting and all that. And then you move on to this. Yes. <laughs> and this is just, it's just rich, rich, sweet, crunchy, different textures. You're going here, you're going there. And then on the next one that we're going to do next is entirely different. Alrighty, so this is our third course. Best for last. Best for last. Can you explain a little bit about what we're about to dive into? This whole menu, there, there was an underlying theme of you know Mediterranean cuisine. So we did a uh, Florida Amberjack poached in olive oil. Um, on uh, eggplant puree, incredible amounts of flavor. We did a, a, a we roast in honey and, and sherry vinegar and, and saffron. Mm -hmm. And then we made a salad of uh, sea bean, shiseido peppers, and hercoveras or green beans on a uh, botarga vinaigrette. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. The cool thing about this dish is that if oh gosh, the, the fish. The fish literally just flaked onto my face. Yes. So poaching is super slow and low in olive oil. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. That's the best for last. It's good. Mm. That, that fish is so flaky. I can see like the poaching takes, you know, long and slow, but mm -hmm. honestly, it's so worth it. 
it just broke apart in my fork. Like, I didn't it's really good. It. It's really nice. Came out nice. I'm happy. So, Chef, what is the next step for you? What's the little details that we can kind of... Um, next step, really, I, I, as far as the restaurant goes, one thing that I really want to bring into the table is to spend um, a lot of time designing uh, uh, an amazing time for the guests, but one accent specifically that I'm really going to dive into is going to be coffee service. Coffee service? Yeah. We're going to design a coffee service that's going to be very attractive, very fun. Um, not many frills, but just more, just deliver great coffee with some great compliments that will give you kind of a highlight of the end of the meal. During the, oh, so the end of the meal. Yeah. So we're going to give the option to the guests to enjoy a coffee service. It's going to be more elevated, more um, intricate, but not pretentious, if that makes any sense. Yeah. We, we, pretentiousness will not have not a place the there. We don't want to have anything like that. We don't want to make anybody feel awkward. You kind of want them to kind of feel like... Home. They kind of, yes, home. Like, you know, instead of obviously spending time eating yeah. at home, they'd rather come here and eat with you yeah. and not have to feel like the need to feel very... Proper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can come pretty proper. I think yeah. I think it's I think it's fun for you to come in and have a great time and you know a put, on, up. put on some nice yeah. studs and hang out and all that. But also, I don't want you having, having the feeling, yeah. you know, of going to the Titanic <laughs> and looking at all the silverware and I don't know where the hell you're going from. You know, you just come in, enjoy yourself, relax. Have a good time. Yeah, and that's you, really what your whole mission is, right? Yeah, kind of and you enjoy. exactly, and you're breaking bread. Strangers, strangers, you know, having great wine and talking about food and listening to the craziness that we're going to talk to about the food <laughs> and how we develop and all that. Uh, I think the whole experience encompasses a lot of fun. Um, and more than anything else, is there's some level of education on there, but really, hopefully, the focus <laughs> should be delicious. Exactly. Why did you choose Audubon Park as your next home? What made you, what kind of drew you to that location versus, I mean, other locations? You know, we, we really don't have kind of a true urban feel in Orlando as much as we do in Audubon. Right? Yeah, I feel like Audubon has a very neighborhoody feel, um, it's centrally located. There's kind of an urban feel. You see people walking up and down the street all the time. And, and it's, again, it's very family, even though we're not going to be like a quote unquote family restaurant. But I want to be able to cater to, to those families that are there. I want to be able to have people come into the door that you know, they're up the block. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're walking up and they're down the street. They're literally walking down the street to just come to you. Yeah, and I hear a lot from my current guests now. They go, oh my gosh, you can open there. I'm so excited. I live two blocks now. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, on Park, <laughs> I'm on Winter Park Avenue. I am, you know, I'm involved in, you know, so having that there um, is really the epicenter of Orlando. Um, I live, like I mentioned before, I live in Winter Garden, Oakland area. 25 minutes to get there is not bad. It's not bad. You know, and the, the, for Orlando, I mean, you're yeah. looking at 30 minutes plus, depending on where your location is. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we're actually going to do a lightning round. Okay. That consists of different Q&A. Pineapples on pizza, yes or no? No. Favorite type of uh, music? As much as I can, I listen to jazz. Okay. Sorry, wine break. Go for it. <laughs> it's like a disco break. <laughs> so fusion or traditional? Traditional. Red or white wine? Red. Favorite thing to make with truffle? Pasta. Pasta. What chef would you want to collab with potentially in the future? Jason Campbell out of Luke's. Oh wow. Yeah. I always I've always wanted to cook with Lo. Um Lo the is it a Cadence Kaya. and Kaya, Kaya upcoming. Kaya. Yeah. yeah. I get to cook with Cesar all the time. Cesar um, used to be a chef, now he's turned baker. There there are quite a few here in Orlando that I like to cook with. Thank you so much, Chef Bruno. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to eat with you, yes. to laugh with you. I got to eat and once. And hear your wonderful stories. It's just really interesting to kind of learn from where you came from. No, it's fun, and really. And then I, you know, I, to where you are about to go to, it's yes. it's in complete 180. Yeah, I, uh, I really enjoy that. I, I did too. You know, I it's, it's easy for me to look at, for anybody really, to look at all the, the hardship, but to look at the, the the little bit of triumphs here and there, it's, it's really nice, really pleasant. Yeah, little celebrations here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just oh, gotta keep on, yeah. <laughs> eye on the go, and you know, it's, it's not about the, uh, this is super cheesy, cheesy moment. <laughs> cheesy the, moment. Cheesy <laughs> moment. But it's not about the destinations, about the journey. It's about really what you get to do along the way. I'm very, very lucky. All right, cheers. cheers.